This job has always taken me to meet a lot of very different people in very different communities. But I think this is probably obvious. I've never told this many stories from so many places, from so many perspectives, as I have with this pandemic. And I've been telling those stories nearly every day for months. So, of course, my life's a bit different now, too. I used to really like going to see shows, live theater, but, you know, a lot of that's on hold right now. I actually haven't been inside the WSMV newsroom since March. Instead, just been working from home all alone. Which means a whole lot of stories written and edited over many, many, many bowls of cereal. But this part's been interesting. Being able to capture with my camera all the seasons this pandemic has covered. I wanted to share a few stories from those seasons. Because this is a difficult time we're going through, these stories don't always go the way we wish they would. But they all involve people who are doing their best. And that makes them just a few of our favorite people. So we'll start in the spring. A historic time for us in more ways than one. We've got a little while to eat. Just enough time to catch you up on the story. It's simply love that Brooke Moroldi and husband Greg Ryan feel for their East Nashville neighborhood. The energy was great here and also found the people really welcoming. They just moved here in November and this place was becoming home when a night in March came and Brooke got a warning on her phone. Get shelter now. This is what the tornado did to Brooke and Greg's neighborhood in seconds. I remember that feeling of, this is big. And I remember a resolve. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. The houses that you see are actually the ones that survive. There used to be a duplex over here. It no longer exists. Those windows there are my office. Basically, that tree, yeah, pretty significant damage. But we're okay. We're okay. Really in a sense of disbelief that this had happened. After eight long weeks of repairs, Brooke and Greg could return to that neighborhood they love. But in coming home, they heard the neighbors up to something. Something it's now time to show you at the stroke of eight. We were like, sure, let's howl. The Nashville eight o'clock howl. Some howl to let out stress from the pandemic. Some howl to honor hospital workers in the city. Tornado, COVID, uncertainty to get out and howl was so liberating. Organized by people on Facebook, this is the final official howl. Though it might just continue on its own. Good one. Even though this was the tree that smashed through my office, the tree symbolizes the heart of Nashville. <laughs> We're not going to stop howling. <laughs> We're going to keep howling. That's all there is. If I'm thinking summer, I'm thinking popcorn. 
the summer movie season. I mean, outside of these circumstances, I'm usually at the theater catching about two movies a week. In fact, for some reason, I have kept a whole bunch of my old movie stubs. So as we go through this year and think back on July, I wanna share this with you. A love letter to hot popcorn and to the movies. The people in Princeton love it when they hear that sound. No doubt. Peanut buttery popcorn. Yes, please. They had a bucket of that hot buttery popcorn when they came for a matinee, or maybe a date night, and saw their favorite movie at Capitol Cinemas. Alfred Hitchcock, The Birds. Hercules, when I was about seven. Return of the Jedi. Fifty Shades. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Lego Batman movie. I just love Christian Grey. Right there. Hello. That's the woman behind the place, Heidi Boy. Two large Mr. Pants, an extra large popcorn butter. We have the best popcorn in the state. I like to say it's made with love, but really it's that salt that gets it. I'm Frederick Lauren, and I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party, a haunted house party. She's so amusing. <laughs> It's such an old-timey feel when you come in. The Capitol is a tradition here, once a home of old projectors and the films of the old stars. Oh, come on, it keeps me company. It's been here since 1939, when a movie ticket would cost you 12 cents. It's been a long time. I was pregnant with my first daughter here. My kids grew up here, and I've helped raise other people's kids here. It's really hard to lose it. It's really hard. Fourth Theater shutting down for the pandemic March through June was devastating. And that's why Heidi is having to close the Capitol. It's been my life for 24 years. I, it's the first thing I think about when I wake up and it's the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. I'm sorry. I haven't cried yet, I knew I would. I'm 64 year old and I've, it's been here as long as I have, about like losing a right arm. But Heidi's sending off her theater the best way she knows how. You see, there's a reason all these people are waiting in their cars. Drive through popcorn sales. How are y'all? Hey guys! Those daughters who grew up at this theater are here to help their mom. These are my customers. I know every single one of them. Here you go. The truth is, for Princeton, it was never just about those great movies. Hi, how are you? It was never just about that hot, buttery popcorn. Y'all enjoy. Thank Have a good day. It was always the place and the people who ran it. The last car drives away. No sound in Princeton of that popcorn popping. The Capitol has closed and come back before. Heidi hopes that can happen again. So you won't forget me. And someone will take it who loves it just as much as she does. I just can't imagine doing anything else for the last 24 years. I wanted to show you some video that I shot just one year ago. It's strange to watch some of this because Life's so different now. Nobody would have thought anything about seeing a big crowd of people together without masks just a year ago. And then you come up to now, and it feels like so often we're hearing about another famous name, part of our community for so long 
that we're losing during this pandemic. And it's those famous names that we always notice and we're always talking about. But there are also groups that have been affected by this pandemic that may not immediately come to mind. That's where we find the next of our favorite people. I like to take something that is vintage like that and either restore it back to what it was intentionally built for or to find another way to, to reincorporate it into something else. All through the Franklin home of David and Carol Knight, there are things restored. I'm always interested to see what he's going to come up with or what he's going to do with it. It's careful, detailed work David's glad he's able to do after several moments in his life threatened to take it away. On a very early morning years ago, David was on a bike ride. He turned a corner and doesn't remember what happened next. After crashing his bike, David punctured a lung, snapped a spacula bone. So now I have five top ribs that are all screwed back together with titanium. It was much later David learned that bike crash was likely caused by an early symptom of his disease. 2016, we're sitting on this couch just watching a little TV, and Carol looked over me and said, why is your left hand tremor? And I said, I don't know, I've never noticed it before. And she said, well, I've noticed it, and you do it in your sleep. David was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And Carol would look at me and say, you need to go lie down. And I would say to her, I'm afraid if I go to sleep, I won't wake up. As David's tremor got worse, and he began using a cane, he and Carol wondered what they should do, where they should go. And one day, they found it. One, two, three, four, again. One, two, three, four. A new friend, Colleen Bridges, is director, owner, head coach of Rocksteady Music City in Franklin. Good. The forced intense exercise and fight training helps in treating the symptoms of Parkinson's. When David first came to Rocksteady Boxing, he was overall physically very weak. He's such a fighter. Results are amazing to see. There's something really cathartic about hitting something when you're fighting something like a disease. Parkinson's does progress. But if they will be consistent in exercise, the disease will actually slow down. Come on, Dad, let's go. Jump, jump, right. But with that need to keep pushing, the pandemic presented a problem. For the weeks the gym was closed, Colleen kept teaching the training online. Today, people can come back to class, many wearing masks and face shields, everything is carefully wiped down and sanitized. I cannot let my fighters lose ground. If I do it, I'm going to start deteriorating faster. It is just like taking meds every day. There's an old bell and the Rocksteady gym. Yet another something David restored. Whether he's in these gloves or these, David's world is about restoration. Sometimes you restore something on your own. Sometimes restoration needs the help of a friend the help of a group, the help of a wife. Please be a quarterback. Marcus Mariota! You know, Andrew and Jock didn't become best friends the first day they met or really the second. Andrew, who should our quarterback be? But the third day, they began to realize. We had like a lot of stuff in common. Games, Minecraft. And that's mm -hmm. not all. I don't want to say it. Say what? Pop-Tarts. They love Pop-Tarts. We need more Pop-Tarts. We do. Around the back cave, it's video games. Break for Pop-Tarts. Repeat. Pop tart and they eat tart all day tart. if you let them all day. Pop tart. Keeping up with the appetite of two preteen boys is Jacques' mom and dad, Kevin and Dominique Gill. As the years went on, they, they got pretty close. 
it's always good to see that bond that they grew. But the truth is, this friendship isn't as simple as just video games and Pop-Tarts. Yeah, Beth. Andrew has lived in foster care about half his life. And more than 8,000 children are in that foster system in Tennessee, waiting for a forever home. They really want that stability in their lives. Molly Parker's with Youth Villages. She tells us the pandemic is slowing the calls coming in for possible homes. And a lot of families were unsure if they wanted to open their homes to a placement just because they didn't really know what the future held. But to that, the Gills want to tell you something. You see, a few years ago, they became Andrew's foster family, but he eventually left here. Oh man, I didn't care. That's not true. I'm just playing with you. Uh, I missed them. Just really love them. And so comes this. Molly and Andrew on a walk through the park. Andrew realizes. Hello? What's happening? I just turned around the corner and saw everybody. It's a celebration, y'all! Hype it up! Woo! The Gills ask Andrew if he'll become a forever part of their family. They asked, will you? And I said, yeah. Button, please work before I scream. I will scream. When we see them together, we're glad we decided to adopt Andrew. And now, Jock and Andrew share the bat cave. Never too far from never ending Pop Tarts. This is my brother, Jacquez. This is my brother, Andrew. I make it no secret. October is my favorite time of year. It's the chill in the air. It's all the candy. Some of us needed a little Halloween after this year. And that's where we find a few more of our favorite people. Have you ever read one of those old horror comics? You know, they were like an anthology. A single issue would have a few different stories. Yeah, hold that thought. Let's get started. This palace opened in 1913, oldest silent movie theater in the state. There are unexplained um, events that happen. There's a lot of spirits in this place. I'm not afraid. I think they uh, rightfully have their place in this theater as much as anybody else. Donna Valote of Greater Gallatin runs this theater of so many ghost stories. But the story of the palace today is nothing otherworldly. The effects of the pandemic have reached the palace. Every bit of it just stopped. It was heartbreaking. I think mid-March was the last event we had here. The doors were closed, the popcorn was sealed up. Um, takes you down the bottom line, takes you down to zero. Oh, that's perfect. You want to do sprinkle? With orange, black, green, purple, and ghost cookies, Lisa Slaughter Barker is mom to a Halloween family. Oh, yours is good. But COVID is changing. How she can create memories this year with her little girls. Oh yeah, I hate it. I hate everything about it. We don't plan on going trick or treating. I want to keep them safe. I don't want them to get sick. I don't want to get sick. We take it quite seriously. Serving up more than a little 70s, 80s nostalgia. People travel from all over to Red Nimbus Tattoo Club to get one of Marty McCuban's Elm Street Camp Crystal Lake Halloween iconic designs. I do a lot of monsters and uh, horror related stuff. Since I was a kid, I've always loved drawing monsters. Selling scary movie gear on his one man riot website kept Marty afloat this year. But March through May, the pandemic kept him from his tattoo work, his livelihood. And yet, three people agree. Oh no, it's going to take more than a worldwide pandemic to stop Halloween for me. 
You see, even if some traditions can't happen this year, Marty and Lisa have their ways <laughs> to bring a little Halloween to their neighborhoods. And as for Donna, helps on the way for that theater of so many ghost stories. And that helps coming in high heels. As long as you're helping out, look at the high heels, the higher the better. <laughs> One, two, three, gotcha. A group called the Boneyard Circus is raising money for the palace with a temperature checked, mask on showing of the ultimate midnight movie. A line of a song in the Rocky Horror Picture Show goes, there's a light in the darkness of everybody's life. Halloween is definitely not canceled. Definitely not canceled. Not here. I said, are you ready to go? If you were growing up in a certain time, the heroes were named Indiana, Luke, Briggs, and Murtaugh. At the Boys and Girls Club today, the names of the heroes have changed. Black Panther, T'Challa. Deadpool or Spider-Man. Spider-Woman. She's pew, pew, pew. <laughs> But someone's visiting who is proof when it comes to heroes. There's nothing wrong with a classic. Uh, they call me Mr. Supreme T. I roll down the window and they see the chains and they see my face and they go, oh my God, it's Mr. T. Two Halloweens ago, this started as a costume. What I have in common. So we're both Geminis, devilish good looks. I love it when the plan comes together. Happy birthday, Mr. T. Uh, yeah. Now, Mr. Supreme T is a social media influencer and he's got all the great lines born in the VHS era. I pity the fool. Don't give me no jibber jabber. My prediction, pain. Just like <laughs> Clubber Lang, there's a story to Mr. Supreme T. Man, I grew up in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, inner city kid, and not a whole lot growing up. Uh, single mom, and I think role models were very important growing up. And where? A very young Stefan Davis Boyd found those role models was at the Boys and Girls Club. The faculty, those guys were super important to us, man. Today, club director Sade Burkhead says the Boys and Girls Club has been a place of one-on-one -on -one tutoring and mentoring when other resources weren't as available during the pandemic. We are that educational piece right now. All of Davidson County Metro schools are closed, so a lot of our youth and family are leaning on um, the Boys and Girls Club, especially at Andrew Jackson. Knowing that, Mr. Supreme T thought, now's the time to give back. Who else want a Barbie for Christmas? I'll say about 20, 30 Barbies, okay, no problem. He's raising money for a toy drive for the children of the Boys and Girls Club. You want a what? iPhone 11, oh man, man, I just wanted Hot Wheels when I was a kid. He is awesome. <laughs> He's super cool. I wish I had a mole hug like that. <laughs> Santa T. He walked in and I'm like, dude. <laughs> Don't be intimidated. Now say what you think of me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a good man. There it is. Stefan wants to bring hope, just like people did for him. And in this place, he knows there's no shortage of heroes. When we just think our heroes are on TV and stuff, it's the people I was at the Boys and Girls Club and just think back to things they told me and mentoring they gave me, man, it's the most important thing in my life right now to this day. Let's keep making them smile, so. And I pity the fool who don't. <laughs> Thank you.
You know, some years carry a lot of memories for us and some years don't. But of course, we're all going to remember a lot about 2020 for the rest of our lives. Through this year, I'm just really glad to have met some really great people. People who have remained tough through the loss of a business. People who just define tough. People who are natural creatives, bringing light to others. People who represent hope. People who remind us of the importance of friends and family. People who have just found a way to smile in a hard time. Good one. <laughs> All of them together make up just a few of our favorite people. And as we approach a whole new year, a calendar of pages yet to be filled, I'm ready to head out there and find more of those people who just make life a little better. I'm Forrest Sanders. Thanks for joining me on this look back.